Anyway, moving on. What is this woman queen of? She's called Frances Lockett of Hyde. Hyde in Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> what does that upset you? No, I just I didn't style. know there was any royalty Textile from, from Manchester. I've been in Manchester. There's loads of queens, darling. <laughs> <laughs> All the better for it. Oh, I know. Absolutely. <laughs> Quite right. Wow. Uh, what do we reckon? Uh, she's rather fine looking woman, Frances Lockett. It doesn't look like a very authentic crown. Mm. Well, mm. it's a really sweet thing, and I don't know if we shouldn't bring it back. So, from the 1920s to the 1980s, there was a tradition of crowning queens of industry. So, women chosen to represent British industries, and some of them had crown jewels. So, Frances was cotton queen, and she was an actual weaver, so she had to know all about it. And the idea grew out of the May Queen traditions, so it was promoting British industry, obviously, but it was also hoping that the practice would give the workers something to celebrate. So, this is an industry day. Out to Paris for the day? Out to Paris, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great, isn't it? So, the first railway queens were crowned in the 1920s, and then the idea it spread to other ones. Brilliant. And there weren't really beauty contests. So, Frances Lockett, when she became Cotton Queen, she had to answer technical questions. She was a weaver, and she did really know about it. And then they had to go and open events and spread the word about the industry and so on. And American companies got involved as well. The Zion Meat Company uh, named Jean Courtney their sausage queen during <laughs> National yeah. Hot Dog Week in 1955. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, we've made crowns for you because yeah. I think you all deserve them. If you want to pop them on. Now, Sarah. Yes. You're from South Shields. Yes. Right? So glassware would seem okay. uh, entirely appropriate. Well, people have been yeah. glassed there, so that's true enough. <laughs> Cotton, obviously, cotton from Magic. Yeah, because we're, we're just massive on uh, growing cress in a dark room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alan's got veggie sausages, which we thought was appropriate. <laughs> and, Louisa, do you know why you've got a centrifuge on your head? This is what we wear at a football game in South Africa. Oh. <laughs> it's a centrifuge, which is a scientific thing, and this is terribly pleasing. 1.6% of all exports from South Africa are centrifuges. So we just thought we'd make a hat for you. I don't even know what a centrifuge is. <laughs> that's that. that. <laughs> You're going to help yeah, me. Yeah, I need to come uh, and help come you. Come and help me. So, I, uh, you may or may not know this, but I'm slightly passionate about model railways. In fact, I'm currently building one in my office at home. Um, and, uh, so You're going to build a little sound. mini one inside it? Yes. <laughs> so, darling, um, I think you have to hold it very flat, <laughs> see if it'll work. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> there was a railway queen called Audrey Moson. She was sent to Russia in 1936 on a controversial peace trip to meet Joseph Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she was the second celebrity to switch on the Blackpool Illuminations. Oh. I know. Right. I would love to do that. When I went, it was, what's his name who sang I Am the One and Only? Chesney Hawks. Oh, wow. He turned on the Blackpool lights and then he did One and Only and then he finished it and he went, thank you, Blackpool. And they, they said, we said, thank you because we're polite, and he said, uh, <laughs> Merry Christmas, we said, Merry Christmas, Chesney. He says, do you want another song? And 5,000 people went, have you got another one? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Do remember to subscribe to the QI channel and click here to watch more videos.